Hello, everyone, and welcome to Take Two. As our series continues, let's listen as Big Al explains how to use word pictures to get your prospects to join now. Here's Tom Schweiger. Several years ago, I did a presentation about our multi-level marketing opportunity to a young man, and it was a great presentation. For those of you that have heard our Big Al Live in London cassette tapes, you know, we use a five-step presentation that answers people's five basic questions, and the presentation takes about 20 minutes. Well, I feel I'm the master of the 20-minute presentation because, well, I invented it with the five questions. So I give this young man this great presentation, one of the very best presentations I ever gave, and at the end of my 20-minute presentation, the young man says, no. Well, I was shocked. Because normally, maybe 50% or 80% of the people will sign up right away because it's so simple, it's so easy, it's a wonderful opportunity. And he said, no. Well, after he left, I ran across him a few days later. And when I ran across this young man a few days later, he had joined another opportunity. Now, not just any opportunity, but he had joined was one of the scammiest pyramid chain letters, 15th generation Xerox, piece of trash you have ever seen. In other words, he joined something that had absolutely no substance for whatever reason I could not figure out. And I wondered to myself, here he is, three days later, he's actually working in another program that is, well, not even a program, really. So I wonder what's going on. What would run through your mind? Well, what ran through my mind was, I wonder what his sponsor said to him that I didn't. Because obviously somebody enrolled him in the, in the program, and he must have said something much more effective than me. So I asked this young man, I said, well, who's your sponsor? Could I visit with him? And the young man gave me his sponsor's name and phone number, and I went and visited his sponsor. I talked to his sponsor. I said, well, as you know, I'm the uh, famous author of the five-step, five-question, 20-minute presentation. This young man was very, very difficult to talk to. I bet you probably spent a day or even two days trying to sign him up. Well, his sponsor said, well, actually, it took about a minute or a minute and a half. Well, I felt about one inch tall. Because in one or one and a half minutes, he was able to do something I was not able to do in my complete 20-minute presentation. So I asked the sponsor, well, what did you say? How did you do it? How did you get this person signed up in one or one and a half minute? Because, quite honestly, I need to learn something new here. Well, his sponsor says, Tom, you have a problem. Well, I knew that. He says, your problem, Tom, is you speak in words. Hmm. I got thinking, well, what other options do I have because I've been speaking in words all my life? His sponsor says, you may speak in words, but people don't think in words. People think in pictures. Now, we all know that one picture is worth 1,000 words. I don't know if that's true or not. It could be 950 or 1,100 but people do think in pictures. And his sponsor says, Tom, when you can speak in pictures and put what's in your mind into their mind through pictures, it's going to be very effective. Because if people knew what you knew about your program, they would join. Your only problem is you can't take the information from your mind and move it over to their mind effectively with words. You have to use word pictures to describe and communicate so they get the same feeling and the same information you do, and then they'll automatically join. Well, I got thinking, word pictures. That might be a pretty good way to break through the clutter. Because what happens is, maybe you give a presentation to somebody, they might say, well, I need to think it over. What happens when they have to think it over? Well, they leave, and they probably have 10,000 different advertising images hit them over the next couple days. And they may have a problem at work. They may have a problem at home. They may be watching TV. They may be going for a ride. And they never think of your opportunity again because you spoke in words, not in pictures. It wasn't very memorable. So I thought some more. It says, word pictures. How do we do it? How do we think? Now, to show you how the mind thinks in word pictures, if I were to say to you the words Marilyn Monroe, what would come to mind? You'd probably visualize in your mind a lady with blonde hair that was a model, you probably 
would not visualize this in your mind. If we were to unscrew the top of your head and look inside, do you think at the top of your brain, in all that gray matter, that a letter M would form on the top of your mind? Little grooves that form the letter M, and then A, and then R. See, we don't think in letters or words. We think in pictures. If I were to mention the name of the famous actor Sean Connery, what would come to mind? Would you see a capital S in the top of your mind? Or would you be visualizing Sean Connery as 007, as James Bond? See, we think in pictures, not in words. And if we can communicate our program, if we can communicate what our program will do to people through pictures, they will see what we see. Now, let's take a look at how people use pictures to communicate. I have a daughter. If any of you all have a daughter, you'll probably appreciate this. Imagine that your daughter is 14 years old, and your daughter wants to stay out late at night visiting with her friends until 3 a.m. in the morning on a school night. Now, I don't know how well that will sell at your house, but our house, that doesn't sell. So if my 14-year-old daughter comes over to me and says, Dad, I want to stay at my friend's house till 3 a.m. tomorrow morning and then come home and then go to school the next day, my answer, of course, would be no. And my daughter knows that. So if you had a 14-year-old daughter, they're probably sitting at school saying, Gee, I'd like to visit my friend, but I'm going to have to communicate to my parents what's in my mind so they can see what I see to feel what I can feel. I'm going to have to use some word pictures to describe this feeling so they'll let me go visit my friend because that's going to be a pretty hard sell. You may think selling a multi-level marketing program to somebody who's skeptical might be hard, but try selling staying out till 3 a.m. to your parents. So your 14-year-old daughter comes home and she's going to sell you on staying out till 3 a.m. in the morning. And your 14-year-old daughter will say something like this. She'll say, Mom, Dad, me and my friends at school were talking today, and we finally realized how much we really, really loved you. We didn't know, and we didn't really appreciate all the things you've done for us, all the help you've given us, and quite honestly, we haven't been very appreciative of this in the past. So we got together, felt a little bit guilty, and we said, well, gee, there must be some way we can repay our parents. But we're too young, we don't have jobs, we can't give you money. So maybe the only thing we can do to repay all the goodness and time you've invested in us and help us out, maybe the only thing we can do is just get better grades in school. Maybe get straight A's. Maybe win a scholarship to a top university. And go to that university, do the best we can, maybe graduate with honors. So on graduation day, we put on our cap and gown and grab our diploma, and we're walking down the aisle with our diploma on graduation day. We'd see you, Mom and Dad, at the end of the aisle with tears in your eyes, just so proud of us because we really lived up to the potential you saw in us. And we thought that would be the best way to repay you for all you've done for us. Well, right now, Mom and Dad have a tear in their eye, and they're thinking, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to see my daughter in a cap and gown walking down that aisle with that diploma? Boy, they're just really emotional. They're feeling, this is really great. And then your daughter says this. And we decided, the girls and I were talking, to take your advice. Don't procrastinate. Do things right away. You might as well get started right away in a project. Don't hold back. So we said, we have a history test coming up Friday. And we might as well get an A in that history test. So what we decided to do was take your advice, Mom and Dad, and me and my friends are going to get together at Susie's house and study for the history test tonight. And we're going to study as hard as we can, as long as we can, maybe even till midnight. Or even till 3 a.m. in the morning if, it, if that's what it takes to get an A in that class. So we're going over to Susie's house and study. And I know, Mom and Dad, that if we don't finish till 3 a.m. in the morning, you, know, you may not want me coming home that late at night. Maybe you might want me to sleep over at Susie's. But to tell you the truth, I'd rather come home and sleep in my own bed and be with you all even if it's 3 a.m. in the morning. Well, what has happened? Mom and Dad have lost. Mom and Dad are still thinking about that cap and gown and diploma, and the daughter, she's going to Susie's house that night till midnight or 3 a.m. But what happens is she developed a picture in her parents' mind that was so powerful that the parents 
had the same emotions that she did, well, she's on her way over to her friend's house. What if you have a six-year-old daughter? A six-year-old daughter, they know how to use word pictures also. Let's say your six-year-old daughter goes to school. It's the beginning of the school year. And all the children in her class are wearing a special outfit. Except your daughter. So during recess, all the children kind of group together with one outfit. And they make your daughter stand in the corner of the schoolyard during recess, facing traffic, not even looking at them. Well, your daughter comes home. She's crying. She says, Mom and Dad, all the kids in school had a special outfit except for me. They had this special clothing. I didn't have it, and, well, I felt really bad. But I know you told me to be strong and have a stiff upper lip and be courageous and all that. But when they made me stand in the corner of the schoolyard during recess facing traffic, well, I started to cry. I really felt bad. And all I want you to know is, you know, later on, because I'll be suffering permanent psychological damage from this, later on when you come visit me in the mental institution, I just want you to know I'll love you anyway. But what's happening is mom and dad are reaching for their credit card already. They're going shopping for this special outfit because they see a picture of their daughter crying, facing traffic in the corner of the schoolyard. That's how powerful a word picture can be. Now, if you're a parent, you know how great children are at manipulating their parents and getting what they want because they know how to use word pictures. What we need to do is learn how to use word pictures also so we can fight back and at least be even. Here's an example of a word picture that's really short. You don't have to have a long one. I, uh, my daughter's 22 years old, and during the summer she goes down to Galveston Beach. And why down at Galveston Beach she notices a few of the guys, and she might come home and describe a young man to her father. She might come home and say, Dad, saw a young man at the beach, and she will use a one-word word picture that will describe an image in her father's mind. She'll say, Dad, I met a young man at the beach, and wow. Well, that one word, wow, creates a picture in her father's mind. Now, the picture in my mind may not be quite the same what's in her mind, but it definitely creates a picture. So it doesn't have to be a long, flowery, wordy picture. You can just use one word sometimes to create a powerful picture in somebody's mind. So let's take a look at how we can use word pictures to build our business to move more product, to motivate people to join our opportunity, to do something better for themselves in life. Well, the secret of word pictures is you need to put your prospect in kind of a movie, in kind of a picture, putting them somewhere into the future where they can see the benefits happening for them. I'll show you how uh, easy it would be is imagine for a moment you are a pharmacist, you know, somebody who gets to sell drugs legally. So you're a pharmacist, and a manufacturer comes to you and says, gee, we just discovered this new vitamin called vitamin H. It's good for the heart. And you say, okay, vitamin H is good for the heart. And the salesman for the manufacturer says, we'd like you to sell to everybody who comes in here, and vitamin H is good for the heart, and you know, smokers and people are overweight, people are over 45, they should probably take this vitamin H thing. And you say, okay, I'll try to sell it. Now, Please notice this uh, following example is not approved by the FDA, the FTC, uh, the NBA, or anybody else. So please, uh, this is only to be used by professionals only, not by amateurs in their home. But let me say what you can do. Let me tell you what you can do with this vitamin H if you were a pharmacist. Let's say that a man walks in, and you're the pharmacist, and you notice the man is over 45, maybe a little bit overweight might be a prime candidate to sell some of this vitamin H. Well, he comes up to the counter, and the man says, I'd like to buy a package of cigarettes. And you say, this is a prospect. So you say to the man, well, uh, with your cigarettes, you might want to buy some vitamin H. It's good for the heart, and you know, people over age 45, they have to watch out for heart attacks and stuff like that, and this manufacturer said vitamin H is good for you. Your customer says, well, that doesn't sound very interesting. Just give me two packs of cigarettes and I'll be on my way. And you say, hmm, this person's going to take a bit more salesmanship. So you say, well, the vitamin H manufacturer has come out with a 20-page research report that shows all the benefits of vitamin H here. Let me read it to you now. And you start reading the report and the man says, oh, that's enough, that's enough. 
Just give me three packs of cigarettes, and I'm out of here. They say, hmm, going to need a little bit more uh, salesmanship here. They say to the uh, man, says, well, as you know, once you're over 45, a little bit overweight, and a smoker, you have a high chance of possibly getting a heart attack sometime in the future. You really should take some vitamin H. It would be good for you. And the man says, just give me four packs of cigarettes and I'll be gone. Just leave me alone. Well, now you think, gee, everything else has failed. I might as well use a word picture to motivate this person to try this vitamin H. So you say to the man, well, before you go, let me tell you why I take vitamin H. You know, a lot of times heart attacks happen to people in the early morning hours while they're in the sleep, they never wake up. It happens so quickly, they're gone. They don't have a chance to say goodbye to their children. They don't have a chance to put their financial affairs in orders. It just happens in the early morning hours before they wake up, and they're gone. And you know that one of the first symptoms of a heart problem is instant death? A lot of people don't even know. So you really should take it. And let me tell you why I take it. Because every night, I would sit on the edge of the bed. I would put my hand over my heart, kind of rub it a little bit, and I'd think to myself, is tonight the night? Is tonight the night I might have a heart attack and maybe not wake up? Have I said goodbye to my children? Have I put my financial affairs in orders? Have I said goodbye to my spouse? Do I have everything taken care of that I wanted to? Is tonight the night? And I would worry about that, and I'd have trouble sleeping. But now that I take vitamin H, I take some before I go to bed at night, and I sleep soundly, knowing that, gee, I'm protected against uh, early heart disease. Well, what happens to the customer? He says, that's pretty interesting, but give me five packs of cigarettes, I'm out of here. And he takes his five packs of cigarettes, and he leaves. That customer, when he gets home, that day, he has his cigarettes, and when he goes to bed that night, here's what happens. He sits on the edges of the bed, he puts his hand over his heart, and he thinks, is tonight the night? He remembers that conversation with you, because that was a very vivid word picture. And then your customer, he lays down on the bed, he stares at the ceiling and thinks, gee, is all my affairs in order? What if I don't wake up tomorrow? What if... Um, I haven't really uh, solved everything at work or taken care of things with the family. It's tonight the night, and he does not get a very good night's sleep. Hmm. Next morning he wakes up. He's pretty tired. He goes to work. At the end of the day, he comes home, has dinner, goes to bed. He sits on the edge of the bed, and he says to himself, Boy, am I tired. I didn't get much sleep last night because last night all I worried about was, Oh, no, it's tonight the night? And he starts thinking about that again, and he stares at the ceiling, has trouble sleeping. The next morning, he wakes up really, really tired. First thing he does is hop in his car, drive down to your pharmacy, and he says to you, just give me some vitamin H because I just need to sleep at night. And that's how powerful just a single word picture can be. Now, obviously, there's no such thing as a vitamin H by a manufacturer that does all this, but the point is, a simple word picture can be so powerful that all those facts you can probably just throw in the garbage and just talk about a word picture in a minute or a minute and a half and be much more effective. In fact, you might have a, such an effective word picture that you give a word picture before your presentation and people want to sign up right away. Word pictures are exciting. Let me show you how uh, word pictures work for a couple more products. Let's say you sell some skin care. Well, you could probably talk about this alpha hydroxide and collagen and seven la layers of skin and all these facts, but that won't have near the effect of a simple word picture. You might say, when you use our product and you rinse it off in the morning and you use the back of your fingers to feel your face, it's smooth, just like silk. And you might turn and look to your spouse and your spouse would say, gosh, your skin looks different. What are you doing differently now? And that one sentence word picture might motivate somebody to say, let me try your product. I'd like to see that happen. Or maybe you sell a weight loss product. And you might say, when you use our product, here's what happens. Four days from now, after using these fat burners, you get dressed in the morning and you notice that your pants are loose. You can hardly keep them up. 
you have to get another belt with more notches in it just to hold up your pants. Well, what's going to happen? That person's thinking his mind. That's what I would like to have happen. Let me try those herbal fat burners so I can uh, have my pants be loose and almost fall off. People want the benefits. The technique to do a word picture is to take the prospect into the future. Here's the formula so you can do word pictures on demand. You might want to write this down. It's a real simple formula. It works like this. You start off by saying, when you use our product, here's what happens. And then just tell them what's going to happen one day from now, three days from now, or one year from now. You can use word pictures to describe your opportunity by saying, when you join our opportunity, here is what happens. And tell them what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, or six months from now, or one year from now. Opportunity word pictures are pretty exciting. How would you like to have a word picture that can, may have earned you a hundred thousand or a million or a couple million dollars just from one word picture? Here's the word picture that got me excited about the business. I went to an opportunity meeting 20 some years ago and at the end of the opportunity meeting I was getting up ready to go and I had no interest in joining the business because after watching the opportunity meeting for a couple hours I was convinced that these people were maybe drug addicts. They're talking about all these weird chemicals or vitamins or health foods. These people were guys jumping up and down excited like they didn't know what's going on. They used strange terminology like BVs and PVs and I thought it was some dread disease. And they talked about marking plans where you go stair step and walk on people and get to the top. And they had wild testimonials that says, these are a bunch of nuts. I have no idea what they're talking about. How could this possibly be a business opportunity for me? So I was getting ready to leave, but when I left, my sponsor gave me a word picture that really stuck in my mind. And his 30 or 45 second word picture made all the difference in the world for my career. Here's a word picture that he used to get me involved in the business. Now remember, I didn't understand anything from that two hour meeting. I didn't want to be associated with these bunch of nuts, but this one word picture changed all of that. His word picture to me was this. He says, Tom, when you join our business, here is what happens. One year from now, you can walk into the boss's office, lean back in the chair, put your feet up on the desk, leave little scuff marks, put your hands behind your head and calmly tell the boss, I just can't fit you in my schedule any longer. You're just taking up too much of my time. So today, I have to resign. Now I know that we've been friends for all these years, you provided me employment, so in appreciation for that, after I leave here today, if you have any problems at all, feel free to call me any Tuesday morning between 10 and 11 a.m. at my poolside, and I will uh, give you advice at my normal consulting rates. Thank the boss, get up from the chair, walk out to the main office, pick up your personal belongings, from your desk, put them in a box, wave goodbye to all your fellow employees who said it couldn't be done. Walk outside, hop into your brand new bonus automobile, and drive down to the bank, up to the drive-in teller, pull out this month's bonus check to deposit it, give it to the teller and say, oh, I don't know, put it in checking or savings, it really doesn't matter, I get these things every month, and then drive home to sit by your nice indoor pool with your favorite beverage. Well, that's a pretty nice picture, and that's what I wanted to do. I really hated my job. And I got thinking, if this business can help me put my feet up and leave little scuff marks on my boss's desk and resign, and one year from now I can be free of that job and enjoy my own business, this is what I want to do. That word picture was so powerful that for the first one year and ten months in this business, I was an absolute failure. But I didn't once even think about quitting because all I could think about was leaving little scuff marks on my boss's desk. Do you have somebody who's pretty unmotivated in your group? Maybe they don't have a big enough word picture to get them excited. So use a word picture to get them excited and motivated so they can see the long-term picture. So it took almost two years before I was able to resign from my job and do it full-time. But that word picture made all the difference in the world. So let's take a look at put in this word picture to work for you. All you have to say is when you join our business, here is what happens. 
and tell them what's going to happen. Have you ever had a distributor prospect come to an opportunity meeting or maybe get a presentation from you and at the end say, I'd like to think it over. I'm really not clear on this. I have to judge my options. Let me think about it later. Well, you can use a word picture there also to help remind them of your opportunity so that it doesn't get lost in those 10,000 advertising images and all the day-to-day -day problems. Here's one that we like to use. Somebody would say, gee, I'd like to think it over, and we'd say, fine. Please think it over at your convenience, but by the way, could you do me a favor? And they would say, sure. We say, tomorrow morning, when you go to work, and you take your keys out of your pocket, and you put the keys in the ignition of your car, I'd like you to think of this. I'd like you to think to yourself, do I really want to be getting up at work at 7 a.m. in the morning and fighting through all this traffic to commute to work? And look around and say to yourself, and is this the car of my dreams? That's all. Well, tomorrow morning, the prospect gets up, goes to work, goes out to his car, takes his keys out of his pocket, puts them in the ignition, and what's he going to think? He's going to think to himself, hmm, do I really want to be getting up going to work at 7 a.m. in the morning, leaving my family instead of doing something else? And, gosh, is this 10-year-old car the car of my dreams? It really isn't. Maybe I should rethink or think about the possibilities of that business. What's he going to think the next morning when he takes his key out of his pocket? Puts it in the ignition, he'll probably think the same thing. So every morning when he puts his keys into his ignition, he's going to rethink about the possibilities of your business opportunity. And sometime in the future, the time might be right for him to say, hey, I think I should get started and do it right now. Let me go back and visit and sponsor into this business. Maybe you could tell somebody something like this. They might say, gee, I'd like to think it over. I'm not sure if it's for me or not. Simply say, could you do me a favor? They say, sure. They say, next time you get a paycheck, would you do the following? When you get your paycheck and you get your envelope, would you rip open the envelope, take out your paycheck, put it between your thumb and forefinger, and hold your paycheck up to the light? Kind of rub it a little bit between your thumb and forefinger and say to yourself, is this all I'm worth? That's all. Well, what's going to happen the next payday? Next payday, they're going to get their paycheck. They're going to rip open the envelope. They're going to pull out their paycheck. And then they're going to look to the left. They're going to look to the right to see if anybody's looking at them. And they may not even hold it all the way up to the light. They may just look at their paycheck and say, is this all I'm worth? You know, I worked three days overtime last week. I haven't seen my family very much over the last month or two. They passed me over for a promotion. They're making us work more and more hours because they're downsizing. Maybe I should think a little bit more about this business opportunity where I can do what I want. Or maybe I should think a little bit more about this business opportunity where I can be free and do what I want. Next time they get their paycheck, they're going to rip open the envelope pull out the check, but between their thumb and forefinger and say to themselves, is that all I'm worth? Maybe I should really talk to him seriously and maybe start working on my business opportunity. Maybe I should have a part-time job. That's the power of a word picture. It keeps reminding people that there is an option that's available to them if they decide to take it. Well, those are great word pictures, but how would you like to have supercharged great word pictures? Something that really gets people to stand up and say, I'm ready to go. This is what I want. If you want to have supercharged word pictures, all you have to do is include the five senses. Because that's how we get information in our brain, through the five senses. They are taste, smell, hearing, sight, and feeling, or touch. That's how information gets into our brain and if we can include as many of these five senses into our word pictures, it becomes more vivid, more alive in their brain, and they can see what we see even more clear. Let me give you an example of using the five senses. I might say, when you join our business, here is what happens. Six months from now, you've saved up all your part-time bonus checks, 
and you decided to take that dream vacation to Tahiti. So when you wake up that Monday morning, you're excited. You go down to the airport, and you see a giant 747 airliner on the runway that says Air Tahiti. Well, you go on that airline, and where do you sit? Well, you probably sit in first class. As they set you down that big, comfortable leather chair, and you lean back, and you say, boy, this is a great seat, and the stewardess comes and brings you some orange juice or champagne and say, welcome to Air Tahiti. You think to yourself, hey, this is a great way to start the morning. And you hear the roar of the engines as your 747 Air Tahiti takes off down the runway and takes off. As it banks and turns over the city to head off to Tahiti, you look out of your window and you notice why you're flying directly over where you work. And you notice down in the parking lot you can see your boss leaving his car, dragging his briefcase through the snow, all depressed because he's going to have to do his job and your job for the next week or two. And you smile and say, I'm going to enjoy Tahiti. Well, your Air Tahiti 747 lands in Tahiti. They whisk you away from the plane, take you directly out to the beach. While you're out at the beach, they set up a nice hammock between a couple palm trees. So you're swinging lazily in the hammock. The nice ocean breeze is coming in. You hear the waves and the nice tropical music. And you smell the teriyaki chicken that they're barbecuing right next to your hammock. And you say, ah, it smells good. I bet it tastes even better. And you look out on the horizon, and you see a little tiny dot. And that dot's getting a little bit bigger and bigger. And you notice that dot is coming towards you. And it's getting bigger and bigger, and that dot is actually a person. As you watch that person coming towards you, it gets larger and larger, and you notice that person is dragging an old raggy blanket. And that person keeps walking right up to your hammock, spreads out that blanket, and lays right down on the beach, right next to you. You look over the person, and you say to yourself, my goodness, it's my next-door neighbor. And your next-door neighbor, laying on the blanket, looks up at you and says, Wow, I didn't expect to see you here. How are you here in Tahiti? How'd you get here? And you say, your next-door neighbor, I, I didn't expect to see you here either. How how'd you get here? Well, your next-door neighbor says, as you know, I lead a really sad and miserable life, always behind on our bills. I work three jobs just to make ends sort of meet. And since my life has been so miserable, I thought, ah, oh, maybe I'll just have three days in Tahiti as a holiday, as a vacation that I can call my own so I have just one good memory in my poor, miserable life. So what I did, I took out a second and third mortgage on the house. I stole from my kids' piggy banks. I robbed their college fund just to get enough money together to come here for three days. And your next-door neighbor then looks at you and says, And how did you get here? Well, you said, Oh, well, about six months ago, I joined this really neat part-time business opportunity. And it's really neat. You get these bonus checks every month. So I can go here for a full week every six months. It's such a wonderful opportunity that, oh my goodness, I didn't tell you about it, did I? Well, your next door neighbor all of a sudden stands up, grabs a machete, starts walking toward you with that machete. How many people here can see yourself in that word picture? Can you see your neighbor coming toward you with a machete? Well, let's take a look at why that picture was so vivid in our minds. Because first of all, we used sight. We saw the 747. We saw the, our next-door neighbor coming to us with a machete. You, we used hearing. We heard the roar of the engines taking off and the tropical music and the waves coming in. We used touch and feel. We felt those nice leather chairs. We had smell. We had taste with the teriyaki chicken as a barbecuing, and we tasted the champagne and orange juice. We had the five senses, and that word picture was so vivid in our minds, we can actually see our next-door neighbor coming to us with a machete. And that word picture is so powerful that a lot of times new distributors say, I'm going to let all my friends, all my relatives know about this business right away because I don't want them to come to me with a machete later on because I forgot to tell them. And that's good. I think everybody should let their warm market know about the business. And then the warm market can say, I don't want to hear about it. That's okay. But at least they won't come to you with a machete later on. Well, what's another example of using a word picture about the opportunity. Now, you don't have to use all the senses. You can only use a few or just use a very short word picture. For example, you might say, when you join our business, 
here's what happens. One month from now, you go down to the mailbox, you open the mailbox, look inside, and there's a big stack of bills and a letter from your MLM company. Well, you go in the house and rip open those bills and start looking at all those bills piling up until finally you come to the envelope from your MLM company. You rip open the envelope, look inside, and you pull out a check. It's your very first bonus check. And you hold that check up to the light, rub it between your thumb and forefinger, and you say to yourself, this check is going to be a lot of fun to spend. Now, a lot of people can see themselves in that picture, and they would like to have some mail other than bills come to their mailbox. Well, let's take a look at a, another way we could present a word picture to get people excited. Let's say your company has a car program or people want to save up enough money for a car. You might say, when you join our business, here's what happens. One year from now, you've qualified for a new car under our car bonus program. Well, what do you do? Well, you walk down to the dealership, and you go to the Ferrari dealership, and you look inside the window, and what do you see? You see a bright red Ferrari. When you go inside the dealership, you look around, there's no salesman there. So I said, hmm... You look at that Ferrari a little bit closer, and you see your reflection in that bright red finish. You look at your reflection and say, what a good-looking person. Still no salesman. So you open the door and sit down in that Ferrari. Take a deep breath, and you smell that new car smell, those leather seats, and you grip that steering wheel, and you feel that and say, boy, this car is just made for me. Still no salesman. So you say to yourself, I wonder how that sound system is. So you turn on the radio sound system and the 24 speakers start blasting away and it's playing your favorite song. And you say, this is the car for me. You look around, there's still no salesman. So you're saying, hmm, I wonder how the engine sounds. Well, there's nobody here in the showroom, so you just gently turn the key and broom, broom, broom. You hear the engine just humming just so quietly. You say, boy, this is a powerful engine, but it's nice and quiet. That's why these cars are expensive, because they're quality. Even though the engine's running, there's still no salesman. So you say, hmm, I wonder if I just kind of nudged it in first gear just a little bit, just to kind of feel the power of this thing. So you nudge it in first gear, and kaboom! You take off right through the picture window. <laughs> Your car goes directly through the picture window, out onto the lot, and as you turn the corner onto the main street, you're already going 90 miles an hour. As you turn that corner at 90 miles an hour, you adjust your rear view mirror and you see the state police fading into the background. That's a pretty nice picture, isn't it? Can you see yourself look into the rear view mirror and see the state police fading into the background? Because we used a lot of the senses. We use sight and sound. We use feel. We use smell. We didn't use taste, did we? Because it wouldn't make any sense. You wouldn't want to say, as you bit into the steering wheel and you tasted that acrid leather taste? Of course not. So don't force to use all five senses. Just use the ones that make sense. Well, here's one more word picture that you can use for people that are morning people or evening people. As you know, some people are morning people. They get up early in the morning. They're very productive, and they probably go to bed quite early. And then there are the other people, which are the evening or afternoon people that maybe start a little slower in the morning but are more productive later on in the evening. Let's say you're talking to a prospect who is a evening person. Doesn't really start the day that good. You might give them a word picture, something like this. You might say, when you join our business, here's what happens. One year from now, you hear bring, 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 the alarm clock's going off. You roll over in bed, slam the alarm clock off, you take a look at the alarm clock, it's 12.30 in the afternoon. It's time for you to get up and have breakfast. So with a smile on your face, you jump out of bed, open the curtains, and you look outside at the rest of the world and see what they've been doing the last four or five hours while you've been sleeping. Put on your house coat, shuffle out to the uh, dining area where your butler has your breakfast waiting for you. As you sit down to enjoy your breakfast, you pick up the paper to read today's news, and you notice it's the 25th of the month. Well, gee, the 25th of the month, you have to go to work that day because that's the day you get your bonus check. So you put on your house slippers, step outside the front door, 
hop into your brand new red Ferrari, put it in reverse, burn rubber 90 feet backwards down the driveway, roll down the electric window, open the mailbox, reach inside the mailbox to pick up your mail and your bonus check, roll the window back up, and burn rubber 90 feet back up the driveway, hop out of your Ferrari, and go back inside to finish your breakfast. As you sit down, you wipe your forehead and say to yourself, I'm glad I got this month's work out of the way and picked up my bonus check. So you're enjoying your breakfast and you think for a moment, oh, maybe I should open my bonus check. So you rip open the bonus check, pull it out of the envelope, peel the bonus check up to the light, kind of rub it between your thumb and forefinger, and you say to yourself, my goodness, they have overpaid me again. Now that's a pretty nice word picture. And a lot of people who don't like getting up early in the mornings are going to say, that's the reason I want to do the business. That's why I want to get started. So that's the power of word pictures and how they can be effective on selling product and getting people excited about your business. And as a side benefit, word pictures can keep somebody so motivated they can go through a lot of trials and tribulations and a lot of failure, but it doesn't matter because they can visualize, they can see that word picture up in their future, and that's what they want. Now, if you use a word picture, even before you give your presentation, this could happen. After your word picture, the person might say, gosh, I'd like to join your business. Uh, is there an application? How do I sign up? And you'd have to say, well, I'm sorry, I really can't sign you up because I haven't had a chance to give you my presentation yet. Now, of course, you wouldn't say that. But you'll find many people that will say, gosh, I'm ready to sign up now. That sounds exciting. And your presentation will only be just a little bit of icing on the cake. So use word pictures whenever you can, or at least you can battle with your children on even terms with word pictures. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Take Two. As our series continues, let's listen as big...